So I was going through your resume. So you have 2.2 years of experience in Angular, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. And which version you're working with Angular right now? 10? Uh, actually, in my project, I am using Angular 11, but uh, uh, I used to practice uh, like the new changes also. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the uh, standard alone com uh, component in Angular 14, the signals in Angular 16. Okay. Uh, like I, I keep on exploring things. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. So, okay. So before start with the interview, so do you have any questions? I would like to ask in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I can start then. Yes. Okay, so we'll go through first Angular and if we get some more time, so I can have some question related to JavaScript as well. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, okay. So have you heard about pure pipes and impure pipes? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like in Angular, we have a, a, a pipes to transform the data. Mm. Uh, so, pure pipes are the uh, like some uh, default pipes, which which like uh, in the impure pipe for every input the uh, 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 like it 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 reloads, but the for the pure pure pipes it only uh, reload when we get this uh, it, it will get the specific input to uh, that by a pipe so okay so uh, do you know any uh, example of uh, impure pipes uh, example mm -hmm. like for example we have a, a, a like a search pipe uh, where for impure pipe it will uh, like uh, look for the uh, uh, whatever we will write there uh, it 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 will reload and uh, search for thing. Uh, like for example, we have a component uh, where we can add add something into it. So uh, if 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 we search something and then we add it in the uh, pure pipe, it will not reload. But in the impure pipe, it will uh, reload the whole thing, and uh, we will able to get to uh, see that thing also which we added after uh, searching in that pipe. Okay, so. So it will reload the data in pure pipe. It will reload the data at uh, like the real time, but uh, in the pure pipe, it will reload like uh, after after doing like uh, if we added the component and then we again search, then it will show us. Okay. So which one is the better to use? Uh, 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 first of all, it's uh, about our preference, but for, uh, for optimization purpose, the pure pipes are better you, uh, to use, like uh, uh, they will not uh, do the uh, callbacks that frequently and uh, doesn't reload that much like the impure pipe. Okay. So have you heard about a sync pipe? Uh, yes, yes. So is it uh, impure? Uh, a sync pipe. Mm -hmm. A sync pipe uh, that must be impure, impure. Uh, I like. I am not very sure, but it yeah, should it be is impure. Impure. So this is what example I was asking. So this is impure pipe. Okay. And uh, why we use a sync pipe? Do you know any features of it? Uh, one feature that I know. Uh, we we can uh, like sub subscribe and unsubscribe the observables in the uh, HTML template itself, uh, rather than like subscribing in that uh, TS file and unsub uh, unsubscribing there. We can directly uh, subscribe and un unsubscribe them into the template. Any any other advantage of it? Uh, uh it uh. It will uh, like if if we are having it in the uh, uh, com component file there, it will perform the whole operation. Then the uh, with the data binding, the data will come to STM template. Uh, so that can have a delay. So for the optimization purpose, uh, we can use it in the directly into the like the template file. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what is standalone components? 
uh like the uh, stand alone components are the uh, independent components where we can uh, give the uh, uh, the all the modules and the dependencies in the uh, component uh, uh, itself rather than the uh, uh, rather than like uh, collection of components and there we are uh, giving them the uh, yeah, giving them like the uh, mod modules imports uh, uh, declaration. So uh, uh, we we have a standalone component where give, where we give the dependencies it uh, 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 to that component. Uh, so we can use it other comp uh, in other component independently. Okay. To uh, to be more clear, like if huh. if uh, we have a uh, in a folder we have four or five components and uh, whenever we will visit there the whole module will reload for uh, like uh, uh, every routing. But if we have a standalone components, it will reload only those modules which which we just included in that component. Modules or components? Uh, like uh, in that components, whatever the external uh, imports, all those things, mm -hmm. only that 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 will like. Okay, and what uh, is the command know. to create a standalone component? Uh, 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 it's uh, ng generate component uh, component name, and uh, with that we have uh, 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 like the what we call it two dashes and standalone. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, hyphen, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Earlier, we are using app module to bootstrap our application. Correct. So, yeah, with the standalone, yes, how the bootstrap happens? Uh, that is like not very clear to me. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the main.js file? Main.ts file, by chance? Yes, yes, yes. Up yeah, yeah, the there we do. It. No, not the Angular 16. Okay. Okay, check that file once because there is uh, the bootstrap now. So from there only we bootstrap our application. Application uh, that I know, or... like we bootstrap the application, but uh, thus from standalone point of view that I. So from there only we do bootstrap components. Okay. Yes, because standalone also needs to bootstrap, correct? Your app component should yes. be bootstrapped from somewhere because when your index.html yeah. will hit, so it should be having a component which can load at the DOM, at the first initial level, correct? So in that yes. case, that we pass as a root bootstrap bootstrap component over there and this will be as a initial load for us. Okay, so have you heard about app initializer? App initializer, no, no. Okay, so read about this as well because it kind of the one of the important thing in the Angular. Before your app loading, if you want to do something, then we have to put something in the app initializer. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. So another question related to standalone component. So see, we don't have modules now. So how our components be routed? Okay. means earlier we use to give the path and component correct in the eager loading then yes, in the modules we do pass as a load module correct yes yes so how we do for a standalone no i don't know about this there is a method load component okay okay read about this little bit okay yeah yeah okay so uh, you mentioned sometimes so that uh, optimization techniques pure pipe and impure pipes so yes, have you heard about track by track by hmm? no no okay we use in ng4 yes yes okay so this is kind of and the one of the one of the code optimization techniques so Read about this as well a little bit. Track by. Track by, yep. Okay. So, okay. if you have some form, okay. Uh, suppose a yes. reactive form you have, something, uh, my form or something. And if you want to reset yeah. the form once you submit your data. Okay. Okay. So, how can you do this? 
if if we have a reactive form uh, then uh, we have some form controls uh, in the ts file mm -hmm. that we specify with the uh, uh, with the like as html tags and uh, there we have a ng submit method that will uh, like take the data from the uh, uh, form to the component and uh, uh, there we can uh, like handle that we like initialize the uh, uh, the uh, we can say headers in the uh, component or ts then we with the form control uh, uh, we can use them into the uh, html file and with the and when we do the ng submit we can take that data and uh, we can do it uh, like we perform the operations on so once you perform your application your form should be reset yeah so how can we reset the form like uh, uh, once i retain then how it is going in the uh, in the ts file where we can yeah in the ts file only i'm asking how can we reset the form receive the form receive no reset uh, reset R E S E T, R E S E T. Okay. okay, reset form. Suppose you have username and password. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you added something wrong, username and wrong password. Okay. okay. Once you click on that, you will get an error. So your password or something not matching. In that case, yes. you want to reset the values from the form. Okay. So that is what I'm asking. Yeah. How can we reset the form? uh one one thing that can be there we can make the reset function for the uh, validators uh, no actually i'm not able to okay so there is a form dot reset method is there so we can use that so it will reset all the method all the controls from the form okay so that we use in the function or yeah in the function itself in the TS. Oh. Okay, okay. Like with the ng submit, we are receiving something, and uh, on that function, we are going to perform. Yes. Like Depend upon your situation. Oh. If you want to reset it, or you want to just uh, remove the values from the one of the control, so you can control your form, correct? Because you have okay. already all all the form controls and all in your TS file, correct? You have the object yes, of the yes. form, so you can perform anything over there, correct? Okay, okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, another question. So, what is set value and the patch value in the forms? Do you know? No, that I never use. Okay. So, so see, you have one form. Uh, suppose you have first name, last name and contact number. Okay. And okay. you have saved first name and last name in the profile section okay. okay once you come to okay. your profile section you will get the data from the back end for first name and last name but not for contact okay. number so in that case you will set your values to first name and last name correct okay. to the form so at that time we use patch values because you are not patching the value for contact number because that it it is not there okay and if you are using the set value so all the values should be present over there so read about this little bit because it is kind of the common question because it is okay, mostly set and patch set set value and patch value okay okay so we'll move to now uh what is template driven form uh in the template driven form uh we like uh, uh we have controls in the html file itself there uh, there with the help of ng module uh, and the ng submit method we can uh, like uh, uh, we can uh, like the transfer the data to the ts file from the html file in the template driven form we have uh, uh, we like initialize and control the form from the html file okay okay yep. okay so we'll move to the next section now so so have you heard about zone.js in angular zone.js like i heard for the asynchronous programming but i am not very like familiar with it mm -hmm. 
that it is useful for the asynchronous and for the data binding yep so uh, what is uh, change detection in angular uh, change detection for like any change in the uh, event emitters or the inputs uh, uh, in the component uh, there is a change uh, chain cycle uh, like the change detection cycle happen and uh, that goes from for all the components in the uh, in the folder if we have multiple components here that are related to the uh, each other uh, it will uh, like check for all the components for that uh, single change okay okay Okay, so suppose uh, we'll talk about now scenario. Okay, so you're working on one of the Angular application and you are using the large number of the reusable components. Okay. Okay. And you want to implement the automated testing for your application. Okay. So how can you do this? Uh, testing like I haven't performed testing yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, like I work in a startup there we just uh, like we write the code and push it on the github okay like, we don't write test cases so, but do you know anything about it uh, like I heard uh, I read about the test cases but uh, and there are some uh, like situation which like we uh, we give the condition then we uh, uh, like uh, specify there what we are expecting from them and uh, if if we like didn't get the value as per the expectations we we get the error like we use the uh, jasmine and karma for that uh, like i read uh, like i did one one year back on myself but i'm not using in the project so that's fine no Okay, so what is router outlet? Uh, router outlet, we like, we use router outlet uh, to specify to the application that the uh, new uh, new page which is going to reload, that should be reload here where we are specifying the router outlet. New page reload means? Uh, like uh, it's a single page application so for example we have a nav bar and a footer but uh, uh, the uh, what's inside them like the main part that uh, if we are clicking somewhere that should be changed so uh, between header and the footer we will specify the router outlet that uh, the next component uh, which is going to re reload that should be reload here where we are specifying the router outlet yeah so okay so can we uh, use a multiple router outlet uh multiple router outlet uh, uh yes yes do you know how yes yes we can use uh, uh... Like uh, I didn't use on a single page only but uh, if two three components are connected like uh uh one router outlet i am using in second component and one is a th in third component then it performs but on a uh, like if we have three component on a single component i am writing two router outlets that i haven't done but do you know what is configuration you have to do for that uh for the router outlet multiple router outlet uh no Okay. Okay, so read about that because it is kind of the important thing. Okay, okay. For multiple router outlets, right? Yeah, just try it. How can we do that? Okay. Okay, so so suppose you have an observable, okay, and how can we handle the error for observables? With the uh, with the catch. Uh, we can have the error, catch error. Observable. Mm -hmm. We have a method like dot catch where we can catch or error. Yeah. Catch method or error method. Catch error. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in promise, what method do we have? 
like uh, in promise we have a then and catch also we have there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in observable we have error method. Okay. Yep. Okay, so have you heard about RxJS as well? So you worked on RxJS? Yes, yes, the, the observables, these are in the like, and there's a asynchronous pro, uh, a, asynchronous and event based programs. Like, we, we use the uh, like these types of functionality the observables of uh, and these subscribe, unsubscribe, these are comes under RxJX. That is the like reactive programming uh, where we can make we are making the calls and uh, handling the data on. the front end okay so which operator did you used for parxs uh, uh, like map filter uh map filter like i know switch switch map merge map uh, then like off which is used for uh, for making observables from uh, like make for making observables and then fog join Okay, so okay, so what is use of fork join and switch map? Uh, fork join like we have multiple sources and uh, we uh, uh, like the uh, multiple observables and uh, fork join. What it does, it wait for uh, all the observables to complete first, and then we get the combined result. It will combine the. Uh, like the it will give us a final single result from both the observables and what is and the what was the second one switch map uh, switch map is like uh, it it uh, what like i know with the scenario like it it uh, it uh, resubscribes uh, uh, like if the one request is happening and uh, we are giving the another request then it will stop that request and uh, 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 like process the another request uh, that i know okay okay so try to create an example for that so it will be easy to like one which i performed is uh, is like the counter uh, which which uh, like with the switch map and uh, the counter was uh, like the counter is counting the values and if we are uh, clicking again uh, to like give it the Uh, like to resubscribe it then it 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 will start from calculating from zero like if zero is the initial value it will like re uh, re like resubscribe to that uh, it will uh, cancel the previous request and resubscribe it okay correct okay so try to create an general example for that so it will be helpful for you to explain better way in the real time not for the counter and all okay okay so what are, what are the directives we have in angular uh we have uh, like um uh, like the classes of directives i am forgetting at the moment one is ng model and then the built in directive or component directive that are like ng4 ng if ng switch and uh, custom directives we have uh, like the classes i am uh, the classifications i am like unable to recall at the moment one are component directives structural directives uh, and custom directives i guess Okay, so what is host binding and host listener? Uh, like the host listener is like uh, listens the DOM events, uh, uh, like whatever we are like uh, special, whatever we are like reacting, it will listen to that event from the DOM, and the host binding it will bind the. Uh, like whatever the operations we are performing on top of that, it will bind it to the DOM. Okay. Uh, do you have an example for that? 
like uh, if we have a, a directive where what we are doing like we are whenever we are hovering the mouse on a component it is it is changing its background color mm -hmm. so for the like uh, uh, if we specify it with the mouse enter then whenever we are uh, taking our cursor to that uh, uh, to that uh, component or whatever we call uh, we take it there uh, then it is uh, 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 the host listening is happening uh, it, it 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 is like like with the help of host listener it is getting that mouse is over there and uh, with the host binding uh, it will change its background, whatever we set there, like uh, with further dome, change its color. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, have you checked the angular.json file sometimes? Uh, yes, yes. So, when you do ng build, so how can we pass the directory dist path? Do you know? Uh, like i know we have uh, we have the functionality there we've specified the like main dot ts file there the directory and uh, when we ever perform ng no, i'm asking ng starting i'm asking yes, yes. when you do ng build so first of all okay. tell me what's different between ng build and ng so uh ng build is uh, a a head a head of time like it we we are using it for the uh, uh, to to make our front end ready for the like deployment and all those for all uh, to uh, for that we use ng built and ng serve is like the uh, the for the development purpose for the production purpose we use ng built and for the development purpose we use ng serve like it it uh, manipulate the dome on the like the real time uh, with the ng built it uh, it it uh, it doesn't reload the whole dome it will uh, what i'm able to recall it will like uh, make those files compact and uh, that's i guess what it does then then make it will make the compact files and where it will put uh, it make the compact files and then we like deploy them so that uh, uh, it will compact these files uh, for the like for the deployment for the production purpose so that uh, uh, they they will reload faster so, uh, but for uh, with the ng serve the the uh, do, uh, the dome reloads whenever we are restarting the application and that that takes more time so that is for the development purpose so that we able we are able to see the changes uh, on a real time yep that is i that i got that but i'm asking you what does ng ng build i know that it will create a bundle files for you correct but yes, where sir. it will put that files what will what will happen when you do ng build what does it uh, it, it, it makes a dist dist file okay and where that configuration happens I'm sorry, like I'm not able to recall. Yep. So over there, output directory path is there. Output path. Okay. So you can okay. give your name as well over there. Up. You can remove this and you can give your name. So it will create that folder over there, and whatever okay. required minified files, it will create it. Polyfills, main.ts, style sets, whatever okay. you are using, images all. It will create that okay. disk for there, and it will put index file over there. Okay and that okay. deployment version of that folder it will be deployed to the production okay 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 so one thing for you to check so suppose you have multiple environments dev environments okay. ubt environments and production environment okay and okay. each environment will be having the different url suppose you have uh, www.dev.com www.uat.com and www.com only suppose in the product we don't pass the okay. uat environments and all okay so uh, Okay. you can try this later so how can we do uh, that environment specific configuration so just check it how to do this environment specific configurations yeah. yep. okay uh, with the interceptors no, no. 
what, what you will do in interceptor for environments there is one file yeah might be missing that environment.ts file okay so have you used that file somewhere like we are using it only for the production in my my project okay okay so you don't have that dev environment uat environment in your project no 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 oh, okay. no okay. so there we have to specify the configurations and according to that you have to change in your angular.json file okay so once you okay. trigger your environment build it will be taking the configurations from the your angular.json file there you have to replace your file with a specific environment we can like okay we have to give it like the like whenever we are performing ng ng build then which which production environment should it use yeah. okay yeah. okay 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 so okay so in packet or json we have dependencies and dev dependencies so do you know yeah. what is difference between both dependencies dependencies are the like the external files with external libraries which we are using in our project and the dev dependencies like the for those dependencies to run like which dependencies we need okay so no no actually RHS. they are in package log no. read about this because if you are using the rxj uh, can you please can you please repeat this question? The yep. last. What is the difference between dependencies and dev dependencies in packet or just okay. dependencies and dev dependencies? Okay. Yep. Okay, so okay, so now I'm talking about interceptor. So what is the use of interceptor? Like interceptor, we are uh, we can use interceptors for uh, like uh, uh, manipulating our as uh, our requests to the, so like the server it. which we anything in the interceptor. Uh, like I handled uh, one I guess four zero four error in the interceptor. Okay. Like whenever I'm logging in. Uh, that that is going through the interceptor and if i'm having a 404 error then i i uh, like specified some message there like returning some message from there uh, that's what i did in my project okay okay so okay so how many ways we can bind our data to the DOM? We have in uh, property binding one. Uh, then we have a, a event binding uh, and interpolation. And then we have one two way binding, which which is a, like mixture of property binding and event binding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I think I have covered too many questions in the yeah. rapid fire. So do you have any question now for me? Yeah, first of all, I'm waiting for the feedback. Like tomorrow is my interview and I am a little bit nervous. Like is this is my first uh, time I am like trying to change the job and I hardly get a call like after two, three months. Okay. So tomorrow is an interview and I am little nervous. Like I, I, what I did in my organization, I built the whole modules from front end, back end and database also. But uh, uh, for the interview preparation, like those questions, they are like little hard. Uh, like I can explore things on internet and build those modules. I built many modules in my application, but the confidence for the interview is little low. Because, because you have not given many interviews, so that is why. So once you give yes. five, six interviews, then you will be a bit relaxed about interview. Yes. So you know Most the concept, like the but read, read about in the depth.
because you know the concept like the way resetting the form so this is the very simple question correct then patch okay. value set value if you are working on the module so you will be having one of the form in your module correct you should be yes, using yes. patch value or set value somewhere correct like we are using the angular material form so still you will create mat had the... yeah yeah no yes yes then you said that uh, observable you are using but uh, you confused to how to perform error handling for observable Right. Yes, yes. Then zone dot js. Yeah. This is a small example of it. Another. Then directives. So, what is the component directive? Custom directives. Correct. Okay. One more thing yes. regarding packet or JSON. This is very common question. Maybe dependencies and dev dependencies. Okay. That environment cost configuration is that is fine. Just I ask you to just to understand this kind of question can be asked. At least whatever question I ask you today, just go through your project and check what you have been doing with that. So it will help you. Okay. Okay. So let me ping the questions to you in the chat so you can copy this so it will be helpful for you. What question I asked? Yeah. Most uh, I think I asked you 39, 20, 20 question almost for angular so and do you think i will able to back i think i think you need to do some preparation more <laughs> okay you have to give at least three to five interviews and whatever see the way i given you the question so note down your questions after your interview finished okay your okay. second interview you will be getting a second interview tomorrow correct so once you've done that interview yeah. note down the, all the questions whatever he asked you okay and the okay. next time you will go for the next interview read about those questions as well and what question which i given to you now so you'll be having the 40 questions list at least correct so yeah. at least you will be yes, having 40 yes. questions so you can uh, give the answer for 50 questions properly then some some interview okay. will ask you 10 new questions okay so add those 10 questions okay. to your list so you'll be having 50 question list okay. so in this way you can prepare and you can create your own answers so okay. it will be easy to explain you next time. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, like I, I haven't gave the interview like the for this job also I just came for the internship when I got the job. So yeah, interview that happens like, when you know. first time switch that happens. But that's fine. Yeah. You are explaining at least in the better way. So that is fine. You need to just prepare for the all the questions. That's it. Yeah, I think the depth is missing, so. Yep. Okay. okay, then, if you need any more help, please ping me on Instagram. So, I can help you over there as well, if you need anything urgent. Okay, on the same page, right? Yeah, yeah. You can find the link in the channels, or you can find link okay. in the videos, any videos. Okay, I think we will keep on meeting. <laughs> I, I found it very helpful, your platform, actually. Yep. I was watching the mock interviews two, three days back. Okay. You can go through those videos as well, so you can uh, have a question list, and you can practice from those. Yeah, yeah. yeah, today, like, today I planned, uh, like, after giving this interview, I will go through those mock interviews and... Uh, Correct. Till the evening, maybe I will be able to crack tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, then please let me know if you need any more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for.